As one of my favorite artists once said, mbop, bop bop doo bop dip-a-dap, bop doo bop If you're wondering why I'm quoting the great Hanson, it's because we're hanging out with one of my favorite Hanson brothers. For the record, I'm like 89% sure he's not actually related to the guys from Hanson, but I'm sure he's somebody's brother, and I'm talking about my friend, Bo Hanson. He's a financial advisor and co-host of The Money Guy Show, which has over 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. Wow. And if that's not impressive enough, Bo has been featured on Fox Business, Time, Yahoo Finance, Forbes, and the mountaintop of success and prestige, the George Camel YouTube channel. So Bo and I went for a ride in the old Tesla for another installment of YouTubers who talk about money topics in a Tesla getting caffeinated beverages, or a simpler version, millionaires in cars getting coffee. We talked about how he built wealth, how faith affects his finances, and what it was like becoming a financial advisor before he could legally drink. Was this like a boss baby situation? I don't know where it's been. It's not where it's been. It's where it will take you. No judgment. We love babies, we love bosses. You know what a boss move would be? To hit like and subscribe on this channel and maybe share it with your boss, whether it's a baby or a full grown adult. Let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Bo Hansen. All right, we're here for another Millionaires in Cars getting coffee with my friend, Bo Hansen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to- One of the money guy. Yep. Not plural yet. Not, yet. well, so the URL for money guys wasn't for sale. So we are collectively money guy. That singular guy. Makes sense. Well, uh, we we had your friend Brian in the vehicle. Yep. Nice fella, by the way. Oh, great guy. Good guy. I can't say enough good things about him. I have to ask you about this before we talk money. Okay. You're very proud of the fact that you sleep with your eyes open. <laughs> Can you tell me about this? Uh, I don't know that I say I'm proud of it. Again, it's just it's one of those things. It's in your bio. Things, right, like I've come, to, I've come to grips with the fact that it happens, right? Okay. How do you even find out that you sleep with your eyes uh, open? Friends and family are terrified of it when they see me, right? So I fall asleep, my eyes closed, but as I'm in my sleep cycle, they slowly start to open until they're about halfway open. So okay. when I fall asleep, they're halfway open. And it's pretty terrifying. It looks like a zombie, it looks like I'm dead. And yeah, I'm a zombie. So I'm gonna take you to one of the best coffee shops. I took Brian to a different one. Okay. But they're both a Starbucks. Oh, okay. Are you okay with that? I am okay with that. Well, let's do this thing. You know your order? I do know my order. Okay. Hello. Honey, it's not Uh, whatever he's having. Let's see what my, my buddy would like to get. Uh, I'd like a grande blonde Americano. Uh, do you want the same? I'm going to do the frozen pineapple passion fruit lemonade. Okay, what else for you? That will be it. Okay, so we 10-10, we'll see you up in the No, I want you to connect some knots for me. You said, hey, I'll have what he's having. He said, okay, do you want that? Hey, you know what? No, no, no. Let me get the absolute antithesis of what he got. Let, let me get a drink as far away well, from what he got what I as meant, humanly possible. What I meant was, hey, whatever he's having is in like, you go first. I don't think it means what you think it means. Hello. Look how fun this is. Oh, wow. That I cannot describe to you how different from my drink that hey. is. Hey, you're awesome. Hi. Thank you. This is a very exciting day for me. I, I mean, it looks like a smoothie. Like this is not uh, sponsored by Starbucks at all. But let me tell you, this looks like a real summertime treat. It, do you drink it with a straw or do you drink it? I think the top? I have to, but I, I'll put the straw down. Let's talk some shop. Okay. What is the best money advice you've heard that has stuck with you? This will sound silly, right? Uh, but it's so no wrong answer. it's so simple. The best money advice I ever heard was save a little bit of today for tomorrow. And that said a, a thousand different ways. Live on less than you make, right? Those those, those types of things. Yep. But it really was amazing. When I first started investing, right? I, I took an investments class in college. I was like, oh, I got this investing thing figured out, right? Like I understand how co compounding interest works. So I opened my very first Roth IRA and I put some money into it and I kind of watched it grow. And I was like, wait, you mean to tell me that while I was asleep last night, just because the market, the stock market went up, I made more money. Mm. It was mind blowing to me. And then I understand, okay, well, if $100 makes 10%, that's great. Well, if $1,000 makes 10%, well, if 10,000, 100,000, excited. Mil, like it gets really, really exciting. And then I started thinking, man, there, there's a direct connection. I know like uh, I, when I was in college, I worked at Chili's, right? That was my thing. And I loved what? it. Dude, working as a waiter at Chili's in college is the I bet greatest you crushed job. Oh, too. It was amazing. It was, I had like a Target demo that was perfect for me. Hi, welcome to Chili's. What I recognized was, man, I have this, these, these investments, these dollars working. And literally, while I sleep, my money can work harder than I can. Like, I can go work for six hours and make a hundred bucks, or this investment account, just because I made the choice to defer gratification, to save a little bit for the future, can do that for me. That's and legit. you compound that over 
five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, it gets amazing. And, uh, and one of the one of the things that I love the most is when I'm talking to young folks or high school folks or college folks, and you see that click, mm. you see it connect. That's a possibility that deferring a little bit of today for a better tomorrow actually works and is actually a, a way to build wealth. Slowing down awesome. that YOLO. That's that, it, that's man. That's the key to wealth. That's exactly. And what I always think is crazy is people think it takes a lot of money to have a lot of money. That's not true. I think when I first started saving, it was 20 bucks a month because I told myself, okay, I, you know, that's. That's two start tables. With a little. That's two tables. Until you right? more. Yeah, start with 20 bucks a month and do that. And so that was some like fantastic money advice that just clicked for me early on. And then I never stopped. And you get better at it, right? So yeah. if you start saving 20 and then you move to 50 a month, 100 a month, 1,000, you know, whatever the numbers are for you. And you kind of flex that muscle and you get better and better and better at it. So I want to ask you about this. Your first million. I mean, this this segment is all about millionaires and cars getting coffee. You're a very young guy. You're yep. about, about the same age as me. Sure. Much wiser, much better looking. <laughs> Do you remember hitting your first million? Like, was that a big milestone for you to have a net worth of a million dollars as was. someone with your upbringing and yeah, background? Yeah, it absolutely was. Not, not because it was some milestone is like I've made it. It was more affirmation. This is working. You know, like I, the, you're on the right path. Yeah, like like I've never, I never thought that, okay, at a million dollars, I'll be able to check out. That is financial independence. That's the thing that's gonna do it for me. But what is great is it allowed, again, you know, my wife and I, we've been married for 11 years now. And every year I do an annual net worth statement. I think that's a great thing for couples to do together. Because when you start out, you're broke as a joke, right? Like a lot of people start with a negative net worth, right? Yeah. Like you don't even have money. And so, you know, we do this every year. Like, oh wow, okay, we have a net worth of 10,000. Okay, now it's 50, now it's 100. Uh, and it was really cool. We crossed over that seven figure mark. And I said, hey, look, this is for these past couple years, we've been saving this money. We've been we've been making the choice to not do certain things that we might have done otherwise. Here's why. Because it's working, because it's building. And so, yeah, it, it was a really awesome, great feeling. But for me, it was more about, OK, now let's keep going. All right. Now at one. OK, what's two look like? And then at two. OK, what's five look like? And at five. You know what I mean? And that. And it kind of keeps, it, it provides motivation to keep moving and to continue to trust the process of wealth building. It's working, it's working. Have you set this like pie in the sky? Here's my goal, I'm gonna get to 10 million and live off of that and retire at this. Or are you not thinking that far ahead as far as like, I'm gonna retire on this day. I'm not thinking about retirement again because I love what I do too much. You know, I also have a belief that, you know, we were designed to work, mm -hmm. right? Like, so I think doing work and especially doing meaningful work that can help the world around you is an important thing. So retirement is not like necessarily a goal that I'm personally working towards, but you know, like Forrest Gump says, one less thing. That's good, one less thing. I'm working towards where the money is just I would one love less to thing. Your forest impression. You know what I mean? You'd nail it. Uh, uh, that, so that is uh, one That's less good. thing, right? Like I, I want to. So I kind of have like a number in my head that once my liquid assets hit this number. If you, you could live off of that, I and could, never yep. it's just a nice feeling. Yeah, that's right. Let's do a little lightning round. What are the things you're willing to splurge on with money now? That maybe you weren't earlier in life. Okay, you're like, hey, I'm willing to spend some money on this. All right, willing to, let me ask you a question about, about you and, and, and what you're, one of you, is one of you a saver, one of you a spender? I'm like the nerd spender, and okay. she's like the free spirit saver. So it's this okay. weird mix where it's like, if I eat my vegetables, I'm okay justifying the yeah, purchase. Yeah, 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 okay. So it's kind of a mix. Like, All right. And we have both have our seasons. So I, I just love saving. Like I, I don't, I'm not a big spender on really anything. So are there things that I love to splurge on? I've got one thing that's my vice that I'll spend money on. And this is gonna sound ridiculous, is athleisure wear. I can see that. Right, like I love. I was gonna go like, this. I bet in the fitness realm. Yeah, I like, do you golf? I I, pl I do every now and then, I'm not a golfer. But do you so. have a membership? No, absolutely oh, okay. not. Okay, all right. Uh, that's, that's, that's a bridge too far for me. Okay, right? we'll um, get you there. But I'm just not. I'm not a big splurger. What about things that you are unwilling to spend money on that you think is insane that other people spend <laughs> money on this? Oh, man. You know what I mean? Are there those things that really yeah. it irks there's, you a little no, bit? No, there's one that gets me. You ready for this? Yeah. Home decor. Not worth it in your mind. Uh, we have just, we have young kids, right? You got, you got a baby in the way, right? Yeah. You're gonna learn, like young kids, they just they just tear stuff up. They'll destroy it. I have two dogs and they do yeah, it Yeah, same thing, right? Like, I don't, do you have that? Is there a thing like that for you? Yeah, I, I, I can get behind that. Here's one, buying drinks at restaurants, I think is a scam. A oh, thousand, now one, restaurants in general were a privilege. Oh yeah. Drink was not even on the table. Like $2.35. You're, you're, yeah. you're getting a water. You're getting a water. You're getting a water. Yeah, I've, I struggle with that because I'm about to bring a child into this world mm -hmm. and I want to know what is your advice for parents 
uh, especially financially. What yeah. are some of the financial moves I need to be thinking about as yeah. I bring a child? I, I love it. Home? I think the single best thing that you can do for your child is teach them about money. Mm. Start at an early age and continue reinforcing it. Continue reinforcing it. For my girls, when they lost their first tooth, is when we started teaching them about money, right? Uh, we got this little piggy bank. It's a give, safe, spend piggy bank. Love that. And every time money comes into their possession, whether it's uh, tooth fairy money, whether it's birthday, Christmas, whatever, we sit down and say, okay, hey, one, where does money come from? So we allow, we want to speak into that. Who is the ultimate provider of all the things that come to us? We're, that's the first thing. And second thing, because of that, how are we supposed to treat money? How are we supposed to use it? Well, we're supposed to give, save, spend. We always give first, we always save second, we always spend last. And so if we can kind of continue to reinforce that with them, when they leave the house, they're gonna know that, hey, I, there's a responsibility that I have to steward the wealth and the things that I've been given, and I wanna make sure that I'm doing that Man, really, that's really good. well. I wanna ask you about this. I didn't get to ask Brian this question, okay. but uh, there's not a lot of folks in the finance space that also have kind of the faith underpinning. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to ask you how your faith affects finances. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I would like to think that my faith, it's not one of those things that like just affects finance. I like to think my faith affects everything that I do. It affects the way I interact with employees, the way that I raise my kids, the way I interact with my wife, the way that I, you know, interact with the community around me. I like to think it's not like this isolation, like, okay, well, now I've got to marry faith and finances. I like to think that it permeates. How do we shoehorn this thing in? Yeah. And so if that's going to be something, you know, obviously that's something like super, super important to me. It affects the decisions that I make. It affects what I do with my money, right? Like where I spend it, where I give it, how I save it, and why I save it. Like what's the purpose? Like I do not place financial stability and security in my dollars because I recognize tomorrow's not promised, right? It could all be gone tomorrow. But if it's not, I'm going to try to make the wisest decisions possible with that because I've been given this amazing opportunity. Mm. And and what I think has been great is, you know, my circumstance that I'm in now is very different than the circumstance I grew, out, grew up in. I think about all the people that had it not been for them, my life might've turned out differently. And in everything mm. you do, I think uh, we should do it with excellence. Again, oh, this yeah. is a faith aspect. So even, even if it's just like, you know, cleaning up your house, you know, do it excellently. Do, do in the part of your job that you hate, do it excellently. And so if you're going to interact with money and you're going to have money, you're going to do financial things, do all of it with excellence. Uh, and that's a reflection on the on the creator that put you here. Man, that's that. so good. That'll preach. You nah. should do a Sunday sermon. <laughs> what do love you think about that? All right. Well, sign me Man, up. I love that why. Yeah, being a good steward of it and having that deeper why versus just chasing the next dollar. That's it. It just changes things. And money, we found... It's an obstacle. That's so it. once we can get over that hump of like, we're thinking about money too much, we can stop thinking about money and just use it as a tool. One less thing. That's so good. Dude, this has been so fun. You're the man. Can we cheers with our non coffee and non-coffee drink? Uh, smoothie and coffee. Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with my friend, Bo Hansen. Huge shout out and thank you to Bo for being on the channel with us today. And let me know in the comments if there's any other Bo's you'd like to see on the channel. Bo Burnham, that would be a good one. Bo Jackson and uh, hey, Bo Cephas. Well, Hank Williams Jr. for you. How about that? He'd get pretty rowdy in here. Well, either way, let me know in the comments who you want to see up next on Millionaires and Cars Getting Coffee. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.